Welcome to the number one podcast covering Michigan State basketball. The Final Four is not on the schedule. Join Rod and me, Eric, as we dive deep into the Spartans to get you prepared for every game. Subscribe today for in-depth recruiting updates and fantastic interviews with today's important college basketball personalities like Robbie Hummel. Thanks for having me. I, uh, I have listened to your guys' podcasts numerous times on drives throughout any Midwestern Big Ten city, so I, I am big fans of your guys' work. Jay Billis. And next time, hey, if anybody in Michigan wants a December tea time, call me. You wimps won't show up, but I'll I'll be there. I'll be there and play in the cold, and Izzo will be in front of the fire with hot chocolate. Coaches Thomas Kelly. Oh, no problem. Glad to be back, man. Glad to be back. Mike Garland. Just can't sit there and trade twos for threes. You can't do it. You're gonna lose. Coming down the stretch, you're gonna lose. And more. You won't find better coverage of Spartan Hoops than you will get here. For both the casual and hardcore fan, come along as we take you for a green and white ride. Hey everybody, it's Eric alongside Rod here to talk about MSU's disappointing loss to the Nebraska Cornhuskers in Lincoln tonight, 77-70. to This is a game where it seemed as if the Spartans played better, but just didn't have to close it out. A lot of storylines here, Rod, for the game. I think you know, both teams shot well from deep, but again, Michigan State found its offense get stagnant a little too often down the stretch. The Cornhuskers wisely guarded Tyson closely uh, at the end, and despite Michigan State being up 63-60 with 439 in the game, they failed to score to ever go up uh, two scores. Lee Hall played a ton, had a season high in points with 22, uh, had seven boards. But interestingly, he played the five, which seemed much most of the second half with Carr at the four, since the offense just really was dysfunctional with the Sissoko and Cooper out there at the five. So now Michigan State's lost three of its last four games, drops 0-2 in the Big Ten, 4-5 and five overall, heading to a matchup against undefeated Baylor on Saturday. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's not much more to say than that. This is a bad basketball team, and I never thought we'd be saying that, uh, but here we are. This is a bad basketball team, period. It's Right now, this is the worst I've seen a Michigan State team play ever in the tenure of Tom Bezzo as head coach. That includes his first two years where they went to the NIT. This is a bad basketball team. I can't say it any any more baldly than that. And whatever hesitation I had about saying that has been completely erased by these two Big Ten games. Um, There were certain things that were better tonight. I thought the effort was better. Certainly the rebounding was better. Um, But in the end, they're a bad basketball team, so they don't win. They don't make plays that you need to make to win basketball games. And some of it is dictated by who they have to play. You know, they they went down the strip playing small ball because they had to. But the problem with that, you saw late, Nebraska got some buckets and some offensive rebounds, something they didn't get very much of. But they sure Mm -hmm. got them late when they had to from Mast because Michigan State did not have anyone who could physically guard him. Um, yeah. That is a problem. Michigan State goes one for eight's last eight from the floor after they took a 63-60 lead on a three from Tyson Walker. Um, it was disgusting to watch their offensive basketball down the stretch. Um, I don't buy that Nebraska overplayed. The ball did not find Tyson Walker when it needed to. You're the wrong guys trying to make plays. Um, in that situation, you ride your best offensive player, period, end of story. And they did not do that. They deserve to lose this game. They were outplayed by a better opponent. Let that sink in, what I just said. Outplayed by a better opponent. It is disgusting to watch what's happened. And I don't know what changes it. I don't know that I believe that it's possible for it to change. I hate to say it, folks. I don't know why you're listening to this. Because (laughs) there's nothing, seriously, there's nothing joyful about this. There's nothing entertaining about it. There's nothing that's fun. I don't want to be doing this. So if I don't want to be doing it, why would anybody listen to it? 
sorry to be chasing you off, but that's how I feel about it. Um, they're a bad basketball team. That's it. Nothing more to say, really. Yeah, it is so hard to understand. I mean, there are plenty of seasons I've, I've felt where I think the team doesn't meet the expectations or they look really good early. And then, you know, the, of course, they're playing diminished talent, you know, or t- they're playing less than teams initially. And so you think, oh, well, this is going to be a really great team. I, the heart, the puzzling thing is, boy, it is pretty much the same team they're bringing back with arguably better players replacing. You know, you've you've replaced Brooks with, you know, Fears. I, I don't jo- know. It's Joey just... Hauser's absence is not enough to explain this. Sorry. No, that's the thing. I don't understand. I mean, it's not floor spacing. So, it's not that. It's just something else. So that goes on everybody that goes on the coaching yeah. staff that didn't obviously did not see this coming. It goes on the players who I suspect now, as I look at it, at least in some instances, um, far too easily believed how good they were. Yep, no and, question. And did not, did not work on improving the things that they needed to improve. Um, you know, I... I <laughs> It's saying, who wants to watch this? Seriously, who wants to watch it? Not me. I'd love to stop doing this right now, to be quite honest with you. We're not going to, not yet. But this isn't fun. This stuff's supposed to be fun. They're not giving you, as as a fan of Michigan State basketball, any reason to be entertained by this. Any reason to watch. Who? Who in God's name wants to watch that game against Baylor this weekend? I don't. It sounds like a <laughs> fucking root canal. But we're gonna. So tune in for that. <laughs> I, I mean, you watch this team and you're like, it's hard to imagine who they can beat in the Big Ten. I mean, they're um, maybe Iowa. I don't know. I keep thinking at some point they're going to figure this out because it, again, I feel like the pieces are pretty much the same as last year. Yeah, they weren't world beaters last year, but they were what third, fourth in the big 10. I just worry that as far as looking at the conference as a whole, you know, if you want to keep the streak alive and just limp in, oh, and please pull off like what they do there in Henry streak. I'm, I'm I mean, declaring it. It's over. Yeah. They're not making the tournament. You've never heard me say that in December of all things, this yeah. team is not nearly good enough to do that. I've seen enough. They, th- this was just another example of it because you finally have a night where some shots fall. Right, yeah, the things we've been talking about. They, they don't do. guard yeah, anybody. The thing they yeah. supposedly, they don't guard anybody. How many times did they get back cut tonight? It was, it was a disgrace. It was a to disgrace the, the the standards that have been set in this program and the guys whose blood, sweat, and tears set those standards, put them into place. This you are you are abusing what went into that by the way this team plays. That's what they're doing. Now I don't blame the young guys. This is all on your veterans. All of it. Yeah. Right. I don't bl- I don't blame Cohen Carr, Jeremy Fears for making mistakes or or Xavier Booker for not being good enough right now to help. It's not on them. This is on your veterans. This is on your guys who, you know, supposedly know what it takes to win basketball games and and to come out and play this way. And they've got no excuses. They don't have injury excuses. They're relatively healthy. Um Yeah. They don't have an experience. They got nothing except that they're a bad basketball team and they're letting it happen game by game by game. They are letting it happen and embarrassing themselves and embarrassing the program. And, you know, I, the, the one thing I guess I would say is if I were Tom Mezzo and I, I, I hear these calls every year around this time and it's always laughable. But it's probably not laughable this time around. I would look at this and say, whoever the guys are that are actually playing the hardest, play them. Yeah. Regardless of talent, play them. 
regardless of ability to hit a shot, play them. And that's probably going to mean a different rotation and different minutes than you're seeing right now. But you know what? What you're doing, that isn't going to win any games either because these guys don't care enough. That's Nebraska shot 50% from the floor tonight. Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, well, that says it all. Well, <laughs> let's go. <clears throat> let's go uh, through our um, through the players that begin with brothers Jesse Gutters. If you need great water work, they come and bring it every time. <laughs> they'll get, they'll take care of the water problems you have in your house or your business. You can contact Kurt and his team in Grand Rapids or Greg and his team in the in the Metro Detroit area. They do fantastic work. They will clean things up and make sure that the water stays off and causing problems. They'll they'll give you some good defense on your house. So the player that Michigan State needed to keep in the gutter was Kisei Tomonaga, who eh, maybe he had he had 15 points, five of 12 from the field, three of seven from three, a couple free throws. They did mildly okay, although the second half he got going a little bit. Um, it was so uh, it was all right. It wasn't great. Yeah, but, you know he's a. He's a tough. He's a tough guy to stop for the reasons we talked about in the preview, and you yeah. saw it tonight. He takes a, what are objectively bad shots and makes enough of them. I didn't think yeah. they guarded him particularly poorly, but you know, it still wasn't good enough. Fifteen points is more than you wanted to give up. Yeah, yeah. I thought in general they played pretty. T- he only maybe had one really truly open look where the, where uh, Cooper didn't recognize him coming up the court. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the five no, keys no, of the game. No, AJ Hogard didn't. AJ well, he was Hogard yelling at Cooper did. to get back there, but AJ so Hogard, Hogard just gone too deep. Him up. That's on AJ Hogard. That is not on Carson Cooper. Okay, that's part of what I'm talking about. One example of a cast of thousands. <laughs> uh, you know, speaking AJ, of that, I mean, AJ it, yelling at people. Save it. Do, is it? I mean, I see people call for it. And maybe it is time. I mean, just go with fears and just ride it out at this point. Uh, you know, to me, I think you're you're getting to that point for sure. Um, I don't expect it to happen, but if it were me, I'd be sorely tempted to because what good is it playing these guys? What is it getting you? It's not getting you wins, which is what it's supposed to be about. So I don't, you know, yeah. I don't care. You look at you look at his stats. You know, five for ten from the floor. He hit the only three he took. He had five rebounds, three assists, one turnover. The numbers are not horrible, but no, it's not winning basketball. They are not winning, and they are not winning because the guys who are supposed to be winning players for them are in fact not winning players, and he's one of them. Yeah, it's it's hard to figure out. I guess I'll figure out what to do. Uh, well, let's go through the five keys of the game brought to you by Nudge Printing. I think you still have time to get stuff in if you want to try and get it by Christmas. You can get great Spartan apparel for tailgating, uh, for, for football, for basketball, whatever you want. You can head on over to Nudge Printing, 20% off to listen to the show. If you type in Final Four, that's just one word, into the coupon code at checkout. Again, you can't beat their high-quality products. Uh, they are super comfortable, very breathable. Screen printed, uh, and they're my family's favorite. So I would highly recommend Nudge Printing at nudgeprinting.com. So the five keys of the game: number one is the boards. Uh, Michigan State was had to prevent Nebraska from doing anything on the offensive boards, and you know statistically they only gave up five rebounds offensively, eighteen and a half percent rebound rate for Nebraska. Michigan State had eight for about twenty four percent, which is not great, but certainly better than eighteen. But as you mentioned, a couple of them down the end when it really mattered, Nebraska got. And, um, you know, I think the overall rebounding numbers were tied at 31. So I don't know. I guess you'd say it's a push. It was maybe. all right. Yeah. Yeah. Offensive movement was the number two key of the game. I thought, you know, at times Michigan State's offense looked much better. They definitely attacked more. They were in transition a lot more. They were pushing it when they, I think, early in the season weren't pushing quite as much. Uh, they didn't quite do enough of that, and they just got stuck in the mud again at the at points in the first half and then late in the second half when it was uh, at winning time one for their last eight that's it yeah that says it all ball game yeah. that's it when you can't execute when it matters most what good are you yeah yeah it looked better for large portions of the game so what yeah 
Well, in the start too, the start was much better. They, but the start on the second half was looked like a first half start they've had recently. And so they, they had a lead and they lost that very quickly and had to come climb back in the second half, which eventually took the lead. But again, as we just mentioned, they weren't able to overcome Nebraska's plays at the end of the game. Yep. <laughs> Number four is Malik. Well, he was definitely back. I thought he played a really great game. I mean, he was, it was a tough task for him to, to play the five and to guard, um, to guard Mast, which I thought he did pretty well for the most part. Uh, he had 22 points. He was definitely a steady force throughout the game. He played 34 minutes, I think it was, 34, 35 minutes, so almost a whole game. Seven for 14 from the field, one for two for three, seven for seven from the line. He's the only one who really got any, drew any fouls at all. Uh, a couple offensive rebounds. So, I mean, a, a good game from him. I mean, he did about everything he could do, I think. I don't have any complaints about the way Malik Call played. I thought Malik, I thought Malik Call um, gave it the kind of effort that you need other guys to bring. Um, he was productive. He was tough. He hunted in there. He tried. Um, so mm-hmm. no complaints about Malik Call. I felt like the weird thing about this game is Walker was really struggling. He was passing the ball up, and even when people tried to get him the ball in spots, he would like pass it to Holloman with six seconds left in the shot clock. Like it was kind of out of sorts until maybe the second half of the second half when he started really attacking. It was just um, yeah, and kind then, of the one game they, you needed him to really be from, there. And then they went away from him. When they go one yeah. for their last eight, they go away from him. Yeah, it's just awful, just awful. And some of it's on him too, because he doesn't go and demand it. Yeah, I thought he just didn't. He was he was. I felt like in general he's very passive this game, which is which has not been the way he's been most of the season. And I'm not sure what that was all about. If he's, I don't know. It just was different. Uh, so finally, uh, final key to the game was shots. Michigan State, you know, finally made some. They were eight for seventeen for three. Uh, the only one who really struggled a little bit was Walker was three for eight, but everyone else was at least 50% or better. So, you know, pretty good. I, Aikens had 10 points. He's two for four from three, but you know, disappeared. I, I, a, yeah. He just, he, yeah, he just kind of there. And then he was like really surging for a couple of minutes and then sort of just dis- yep. disappears. He played then some bye good bye defense bye. in some couple of stretches. Just gone. Yeah. yeah. That, look, He's the one is, I think is the, the trickiest one for me to, to, get a handle on it. I mean, AJ has kind of been AJ. I mean, this is not anything new, right? But I feel like Aikens has really been yeah, different, uh, like, I, different I, this season. I don't understand it. And, you know, it It really, I hate to say it, but it, what has happened has made so much of the discourse around the end of last season with regard to him absolutely laughable. Yeah. I'm I'm so puzzled by the whole thing, and I, because again, this is not a terrible team last year. They're down Joey Joey Hauser, but there's no reason for this happening. I just it makes you wonder if there's like real problems in the locker room or some sort of. I, I just don't understand the dysfunction with that's going on with this team. Yeah, I, but, there's look, um, what I see is and, and tonight is a perfect example of this. And I said it coming out of the Wisconsin game. And you'll notice, if you're listening, my tone has changed pretty radically over the last week. Um, I did not feel that the sky was necessarily falling after the losses to Duke and Arizona. In fact, I saw some positive things coming out of those games. But, yeah. But here's the deal. Tonight, you saw what happens when this team does hit some shots. uh, And they do some things. They keep Nebraska off the glass. But they don't guard. And they don't come up with 50-50 balls. And they don't make big plays when they have to be made if you want to win a game. They don't do any of those things. And that is, in my mind far less of a solvable problem than is shots falling. And so that's why I am where I am right now. And, and obviously the Wisconsin game was an even worse example of those things. 
not happening. Yeah. Well, and a much better team too, right? I mean, that, yeah. they're going to punish um, you a lot more than Nebraska. You know, you can you can point at certain things that went better tonight, but it didn't matter. And the reason it didn't matter is they let Nebraska shoot 50%. Yeah. Because they didn't guard anybody. That's, look, I mean, they all got to wear it. It's it's as simple as this. That's a bad basketball team right now. You got me slancing. And I don't know what I, I don't know that I believe that the elements are there with this group to change that. It 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 is beginning to feel to me like you just kind of need to let this play out and some guys to leave and new guys to come in and you start from there. You reboot this, you restart this. Because I don't see reason I I've said this out of la- at coming out of the last game, I'm going to reiterate it. I see no reason to believe. And and look look up look up the last time I said that about a Michigan State basketball I, team. You'll see I don't remember never, that never. never. But I'm saying it now. How is this team different than the team during the COVID year, which you know had no that point team, guard? You could and understand, really struggled. but that's the thing. You could understand. Okay, you could say, well, you know, Izzo made mistakes in terms of roster construction. Okay, fair enough. I think they they thought that they would get much more out of Rocket, and I think they thought mm-hmm. that Foster would take more steps. Those things did not happen, but those things were also exacerbated by conditions. You know, the yeah. coaching staff couldn't get with these guys, blah, blah, blah. You could understand it. This is so much worse because there's no excuse for it. There's none. Yeah. You have guys who are in their third year as starters. Supposedly, I mean, this was, t- I, I seriously thought, as laughable as it sounds now, I seriously thought, yeah, I think they've got the best set of guards in America. That's a joke. Yeah. That's an absolute joke. They've got one guy in Tyson Walker who's playing at the level that I thought he would. Maybe even a little bit beyond that. Um, mm-hmm. but the other two guys, please, please nowhere close to what they need to be. Yeah. Well, I don't have much more to add to that, I guess, except hope at some point they can turn around. I mean, that's all you, that's all you can hope for that it's December. And then I don't know, something changes and I'm not sure probably not what it is or probably but, not. I, I hate to say it, but probably not. They've shown, they've given zero indication of that. And so uh, probably about the only thing you have to really, to really look at is you, you're, you're now where the true drag programs are, where all you've really got to look forward to are, well, do some of the young guys show signs of life, except remember we're in an era now where that doesn't even necessarily mean anything. Because no, there's no they guarantee leave, yeah. they're going to be there. Yep. So have fun, everybody. <laughs> well, the, I think, you know, the, of course, the, the hardest part of all of this is the fact that this football season was complete, you know, disaster. Oh, I, you know what? And then, no, and then this just, no, this just kind of, no, it just makes it tough for fans. I think, I, would I don't be, know. I think I this would, makes no, it harder. There, there's, there are no condition. I, I understand the point you're making, but there are no conditions under which this would be anything but exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. If no, the, I, if I the see, football I, I team was saying. playing yeah. in the Rose Bowl, it wouldn't make this any more palatable. That's not, not right. for me. As I've always been a basketball first person. So this is this would be awful no matter how you slice it. All right. Well, I think we'll just we'll just end it there. And we'll be back in a couple days with the Baylor preview. <laughs> and hope that, you know, Something changes, and I think we'll just have to just have to hope that Izzo pulls some magic out of a hat or something like that. So, all right. So until next time, the final four is on the schedule. Go green.
Selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... As easy as pie? Sure. All you have to do is enter your license plate or VIN. As easy as a stroll in the park. Okay. Then just answer a few questions and you'll get a real offer in seconds. As easy as singing. Why not? Schedule a pickup or drop-off and Carvana will pay you that amount right on the spot. As easy as playing guitar. Actually, I find that kind of difficult. But selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... Can be. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get an instant offer today.